Pasta puntanesca is the one pasta that I hate, but today I'm going to try and make it, and I'm gonna try and like it, even though I hate olives and I hate anchovies. So let's just jump right into it. First up, we've got four cloves of garlic. It's a lot of garlic, but that's on purpose. I want that garlic flavor to come out. I wanna get it a little roasty, and I want that to sort of be a prevalent flavor so I can sort of balance out the pungency of the other flavors that are more characteristic of this dish. Garlic is definitely traditional. We're just gonna try and amp that up to the max. So four cloves of garlic is what I go with. You know me, I always love to slice my garlic thinly. So I just go through and give the cloves a nice cut in half, which is gonna then allow us to peel the paper off of the garlic cloves really easily. You don't need any tricks. I really don't know why people have a hard time with this. Then I just like to line up the garlic and slice them very thin. Now you may ask yourself if you don't like this recipe, why would you make it? Well, I was actually on a date recently and the woman I was on a date with said it was her favorite pasta. Needless to say, that was the end of that date, but it got me thinking if I were dating someone who did love this pasta, how would I make it so that I could also enjoy it too? And that's sort of the genesis of this recipe. Then we got our garlic slice. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Now when it comes to puntanesca, these are the three most defining ingredients. You've got kalamata olives, you've got capers, and you've got anchovies. In Italian, the word puttana means whore or prostitute. So they say the name came from the fact that this is a stinky sort of pungent pasta named after the ladies of the night. Others say that it was derived from just not having any fresh ingredients and using what was available in the pantry. Regardless of the story, one thing is true. I hate olives. Me and anchovies ain't too friendly either. And those are the key ingredients in puttanesca along with capers, which I do have a good relationship with. I mean, they're just so unapologetically briny. They don't have a great texture. Every few years I try to eat olives, I try and like them, but they just are disgusting to me, I'm sorry. Now after doing some research into olives, not all olives are the same. They have different varieties and all of those varieties have different flavors. So I figured maybe I could find an olive that's a little bit more suitable to my taste. And that's when I discovered the Castle Vitrano olives. These are Sicilian olives and some claim them to be the best olives in the world. They're bright green, they have a firmer texture. They just look a little bit better quality to me. And the flavor's milder, it's less briny. There's like a buttery sweetness to it. And to me, it's actually very palatable. It's not an over brininess. It's not kind of like an intrusive flavor. I think these are gonna do. I'm gonna need about a quarter cup of these chopped. So I think that'll be maybe five olives. And these are seeded, so we to get the seeds open, we just give it a little crack. Just get the seed out of there. Now I'm gonna chop it up because I don't really wanna bite into big pieces of olive. So my strategy is if I chop it up real fine, it'll just sort of meld into the dish. It'll add its brininess, its flavor, its saltiness, but it won't be too intense. Now, if you wanna amplify the intensity and the pungency, you can not only add more olives, but you can keep them thicker. You can keep them more coarse. You can get little big pops of olive in there if that's something you like. Now with the capers, I'm gonna go about an equal amount. I don't really need their brine. Maybe two tablespoons. I'm gonna chop those into the olives. Just run your knife through the capers and the olives a few times to break them down into an even coarseness. What you're looking for is something that resembles somewhat of a relish. Next up we have our anchovies. Now, this is another thing that you can dial it down or dial up. I'm gonna dial it slightly down. I'm gonna use about three anchovies. Even if you use a lot, you shouldn't really taste them in there. But again, this is the picky eater and me talking, but if you're an anchovy lover, you like these pungent flavors, you can go up to eight to 10 anchovy fillets, and that's just gonna dial up that pungency. Just reminds me of stinky feet. Now I have an open mind. I give these things a shot every few years, so I'll give it another shot, but ugh. nope, 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 nope. I'm just gonna use three and call it a day. You use however much you like. Now these should dissolve when they hit the oil, but we're just gonna give them a quick chop. So I get a lot of people saying, how could a chef not like these ingredients? And for one, I don't consider myself a chef. And two, the idea that chefs like everything on earth is simply insane. So we're gonna start off with the anchovies and the garlic, and then we're gonna go in with the capers and the olives. Let's set those off to the side, and we got a few other ingredients 
that are gonna go in. We're gonna use about a tablespoon of chopped Calabrian chilies. That acidity and that spiciness is also gonna add a ton of flavor and it's gonna balance everything out. And then I'm trying this can of Muti cherry tomatoes. These ingredients are gonna be paired with a half pound of pasta. So if you're gonna serve a full pound, then you can totally double everything. And that should satisfy one pound of pasta. One other ingredient that's not really traditional is just a quarter a cheek of a lemon. We're gonna squeeze that in, sort of deglaze the pan. Then I'm just gonna add about a half a cup of breadcrumbs and we're gonna toast those for a little bit of texture on top. And traditionally, this is served with fresh parsley, but I actually prefer fresh basil with this. So I'm gonna go with some fresh basil, but if you have parsley or basil, you can use either. I opted for these cherry tomatoes because this recipe only calls for a half of a can. And I also thought that the cherry tomatoes would bring a sweetness that might balance this recipe out nicely. Now I'm gonna get a small pot of water up to a boil and we've got anchovies, capers, and olives, which are salty ingredients to begin with. So we don't wanna oversalt the water. If anything, you wanna undersalt it and we can adjust it later. So while the water comes up to a boil in a separate pot next to it, we're gonna add enough olive oil to coat the bottom of the pan along with the garlic and the anchovies. And we're gonna let those cook. And as the anchovies cook, they sort of dissolve into the oil. And we're looking to caramelize and brown the garlic. Once you see the garlic starting to brown, you wanna add about a tablespoon of the Calabrian chili and start to work that into the oil. Now you might say to yourself, Steve, is that garlic burnt? And no, it's not. You should normalize experimenting with garlic at different stages of being caramelized because it brings out different, more complex garlicky flavors than simply just sauteing it until it's translucent. Then we want to get the capers and the olives in, and we just want to cook that for a minute or two, bring all of those flavors together, and then we can lower the heat, and we just want to add a squeeze of that lemon juice in there. Most of the ingredients in this dish are preserved ingredients, so a little freshness, I think, is needed. And then we can get the tomatoes in, and I just like to kind of give them a pop, let those juices come out and start to form the sauce. And we just want to bring that up to a simmer and just let that sauce marry and come together and thicken. While that happens, we can get the spaghetti in. And I'm using this squared spaghetti, which I really love using as of late. And I'm just going to get that into the boiling water and get it all submerged. Cooking the pasta in a smaller pot is just going to concentrate that starchiness in case we need it for the sauce. The pasta is al dente in 11 minutes, so I'm going to set a timer for 10. Now while the sauce and the pasta is cooking, I wanna toast some breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna get the breadcrumbs into a small pan with a little bit of olive oil and get it all mixed up. Let it brown, stirring every minute or so, making sure you don't burn it. Now that the breadcrumbs are browning and the pasta is cooking, we wanna just check our sauce. We wanna check it for seasoning. It should be plenty salty, but if it needs salt, you can add some. Now I'm just dancing around the stove, managing the ingredients, making sure the breadcrumbs don't burn, making sure the sauce doesn't scorch, and making sure the pasta is cooking properly and doesn't stick. So I I like cooking at the stove instead of on the counter with an induction burner because at the stove you move different. Breadcrumbs are nicely browned and crispy. I want to get them out of the pan into a paper towel lined plate and hit them with a little bit of salt. So by now the pasta has been cooking for about 10 minutes. It should be just under al dente and we're going to transfer the pasta into the pasta sauce. We want to finish cooking that pasta for the last one or two minutes in the sauce. It's going to slow down the cooking process. It's going to allow you to cook it to perfection and then pull it once it's perfect. The pasta is also going to soak up that sauce so if you need a little bit more moisture you can add some pasta water to the mix and work that in and once the pasta is al dente and the sauce is coating the pasta we want to throw some fresh basil leaves in there to brighten everything up and then it's ready to serve looks pretty good to me and so now the plating style for pasta that i've liked recently especially spaghetti is grabbing the strands with the tongs each strand of pasta grabbing onto that sauce and then gently placing it onto the plate and then a little bit of sauce on top and if you need a little bit of sauce you got to stretch that sauce out add a little pasta water to the pot and it'll reconstitute it a little bit of parmigiano reggiano some more fresh basil and the toasted breadcrumbs and if i may say so myself it ain't looking too bad will steve finally like an olive dish let's find out i must be honest i actually enjoy it it's spicy it's got a little brininess there's a seafoody aspect to it but it's not sort of overpowering. If you're a pasta puntanesca aficionado, this may be not pungent enough for you, but all you gotta do is amp up the olives, amp up the anchovies, and this should get you there. Full recipe is gonna be down in the description. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. Otherwise, that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.
I think it's time you might want to brush up on some cacio pepe. I just made a new video teaching various methods on how to create the creamiest cacio pepe that you've ever had. I guarantee it. Give it a shot and thanks for watching.